Konnichiwa! It's Jenny here from The Bear and the Fox. I'm back today to spread some more picture book love and today I wanted to share with you the picture books that we brought back from our recent visit to Japan. So for those of you who don't know, I actually met my husband in Japanese night class almost 15 years ago. I have to confess I have forgotten most of my Japanese but I can still understand a little bit and I can still read a little bit. So I love visiting bookshops uh, when I'm traveling anyway but particularly on this trip to Japan I wanted to get some um, Japanese picture books to add to my picture book collection but also to get back into practicing my Japanese reading. So after that rather long introduction let's get started with the first book. So first we have this book and it was the beautiful cover illustration that caught my eye and this book is called Doshaburi. So here you can see that um, that's the title, it's written in, in kana rather than kanji, so it looks quite different from the, the pictograms. And doshaburi means as much as downpour, or cloudburst, heavy rain, and you can probably tell from the cover why it's called that. And the book starts with a little boy and he goes outside and it's a really hot day, and then he notices this big black cloud on the horizon coming closer and a few minutes later it starts to rain so he's not looking that happy there but then he gets out his umbrella lovely yellow umbrella and I haven't fully <laughs> worked my way through this yet and all the text because I'm still catching up it's been a while since I've read any Japanese but one thing that I did notice and my husband who's a more fluent in Japanese helped me a little bit with this is it's got a lot of uh, onomatopoeic um, text in it so here you've got the boy with the umbrella and the rain's falling down and it says bara 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 botsun 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 Ton, ta -ta -ton, ta -ta -ton. So it's the sound of the rain falling on his umbrella and it's absolutely brilliant, I think. And then he goes all out, so he's kicked off his shoes and he's just really going for it. He's just running through the puddles and you can just feel his joy at playing in the rain, coming off the pages even if you don't understand the text. It's another one of my favourites. He's just feeling the rain on his face and he just looks really content and at one with nature and then the rain passes and at the very end there he is he's a little bit wet <laughs> actually a lot wet there's the cloud heading off again into the distance and he looks really happy and this is just such a beautiful book like I just said even if you don't actually understand any of the Japanese text um, you do miss out on some of the, the beautiful play with language but you can still completely understand the story. I think this would work just as well as a wordless picture book and the illustrations are absolutely gorgeous. And I have had a look, it doesn't seem to be an English translation of this book, which is a shame. But if you love beautiful picture books, you might still want to try and get your hands on this because you can still get the story um, out just from looking at the pictures. Next up we have a very fun book. It's called Shirokuma no Pantsu, which translates as polar bear's pants, and it comes with a pair of bright red pants, which you actually need to pull off to open the book and read it. So this is a fun book um, with sort of cutouts and lots of surprises. So here's polar bear and his little friend, Mouse. And polar bear is looking for his pants. So on each page, you've got a different pair of pants and basically it follows the same rhythm on each page. So they're asking, you know, uh, are, are these polar bear pants? No, these are not polar bear's pants. So whose pants are they? And you turn the page and there's Deborah's pants. So then they keep going, looking for pants. 
Who, who's are these pants? Pants with donuts and strawberry shortcake on them. Pig's pants, still not polar bear's pants. And there's quite a few pants, so. Oh, little itty bitty bear of pants. Are these polar bear's pants? Are they? What do you think? No, they're butterflies pants. And then there is a lovely twist at the end. And they come on this pair of pants. At which point, Polar Bear remembers. Oh yes, I put on my new pair of white pants this morning. <gasps> Silly me. So that's a fun little twist at the end. I usually don't reveal um, twists at the end of books, but um, I just thought this time I would. So that's um, Polar Bear's pants. Now this one is actually available in English. In English it's called Polar Bear's underwear and I'll put the details up on my blog if you want to check it out. I think this is a brilliant and fun book and I've been reading this with the boys and they love it. And <laughs> while we're on the subject of funny books, um, the last book I have, um, <laughs> so, I just, sorry, I just can't stop laughing about this book. So. The Japanese are known for making pretty much anything into cute cartoon characters like vehicles, fruit and vegetables, all kinds of animals. So only the Japanese, and I mean this in the nicest possible way, could come up with this cartoon character. You think, hmm, his face looks a bit strange. Well, this is Oshiri Tante, which literally translates as Oshiri means butt and Tante is detective. So this is literally the butt detective. <laughs> and he, there's picture books about him, there's also chapter books, and it is a cartoon series on TV, and it is hugely popular in Japan. It threw up so many questions for us, um, like how does he breathe, how does he eat, does he have another butt at the other end? But I think it's mostly the adults that have been over analyzing this because kids just absolutely love the butt detective. But anyway, so I just thought I'll show you a little bit of what's inside. So here's on the on the inside front page, Oshiri Tante, or butt detective, shows this got all the stuff he needs for his job. Here's Oshiri Tante having his uh, morning cup of coffee and his pie and please don't think too closely about how he's having these um and then he gets called in she looks really sad little sheep she runs the local candy store and the candy store has been robbed oh no so here it is like you can see all the jars are empty and there's the police and and they've called in Oshiri Tante to help as well. <laughs> Sorry. And um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the illustrations, the kind of sort of cute kawaii style that we know from Japan, um, except that the detective has a butt for a head. And so here he is with his magnifying glass and he's following the footsteps to see where the thief has gone. So then here he is interviewing lots of suspects or witnesses or both. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't worked my way through all the text yet, but you kind of get the gist of it. And they all look kind of guilty. And then he's obviously had a flash of inspiration. <laughs> and, um, he's on the case, he's on the case. And he has, he has pinned down who the culprit was. Here it's Pig, he's cowering in the corner with a big sack, which is presumably full of all the sweeties that he's stolen. And this is my boy's favorite bit, because Oshiri Tante overpowers the baddies by passing wind in their face, as you do. So the boys also like to call him Detective Farty Face. And um, yeah, so he um, farts in their face and overpowers them. <laughs> Saves the day! Yeah, that's Oshiri Tante. Uh, <laughs> 
sorry, I told you I can't stop laughing about this. It's just so hilarious. The boys absolutely love it. Kids in Japan absolutely love it. So yeah. A shitty tante. So again, as far as I could discover, this has also not been translated into English yet. And my boys were absolutely devastated to get home and discover that UK Netflix does not have Oshiri Tante. But if you're off to Japan anytime soon, you might want to check him out because he is super popular. Oshiri Tante, the butt detective. And that was it. Those were the picture books that we brought home from our trip to Japan. I'll put a couple more details about them over on my blog and as always you can find the link to that in the notes below. If you enjoyed today's episode then please do like this video and subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time. Happy reading! Bye!